today's Sports Authority Board of Directors meeting to order. Thank you to the Tennessee Titans, especially President Steve Underwood and his team for uh, hosting us today here at Nissan Stadium. We are very excited to learn more today about their work in preparation for the NFL draft. Uh, it's hard to believe it is only a month away, just over a month away. So we're excited to, to learn more about that this morning. Last weekend, too, the arena hosted a very successful men's SEC basketball tournament. And congratulations to the arena team for pulling off another very successful tournament in partnership with the National Sports Council. The Predators are home tonight. They have a very important uh, important game as they wrap up the, the end of their regular regular season and they will be against the Penguins. I know we'll all be rooting for them later today. First Tennessee Park recently hosted their season opener for our USL team, the Nashville Soccer Club. And this weekend, the Sounds are playing an exhibition game against the Texas Rangers on Sunday. So clearly there's a lot of exciting things happening in the Nashville sports community. And before we dive into today's agenda, I would like to take a moment to introduce our newest board member, Mr. Dan Hogan. Please join me in welcoming Dan to our board. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for, for joining us. Dan is the founder and CEO of Metalogix, a prominent healthcare analytics company. He was named Nashville's 2016 Entrepreneur of the Year by the Nashville Chamber and the Entrepreneur Center. And he has also been named one of the most admired CEOs by the Nashville Business Journal. So thank Greatly you. exaggerated. Uh, <laughs> we really appreciate you sharing your time and talents with us and look forward My to pleasure. serving thank with you. you. And as always, the appeals process for any action of this board can be found at the top of today's agenda. Next item is consideration of our meeting minutes from last month. Uh, the meeting minutes were sent out on Friday. Um, we have one minor typo on page one, which is deleting the word attorney from the executive director's report second page. Um, but with that change, we would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Move approval. Second. Motion and properly seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. The minutes are approved. Monica will give us our ED report. Monica. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here today. First, I also want to welcome Dan to the board. We had a chance to grab lunch yesterday. Really excited about his perspective, the ideas that he's going to bring, and and. We look forward to something with you. Thank you. Um, also, Mayor Briley has nominated Aaron McGee to fill the school board district six seat that Kalat held. Um, Aaron is the executive director of the Youth Life Learning Centers, and he goes before the Metro Council on April the second for confirmation, up for confirmation, and so we hope to have him at our meeting on April the eighteenth. Also next Wednesday, March the 27th, we'll have our FY20 operating budget discussion with Mayor Briley. Um, the hearing will be at 1115 in the mayor's media room, and we always just enjoy great support from the board and from our facility partners, and, and we really appreciate it. So if you um, are able to come, if you would just let our office know, that would be very helpful. Um, last month, I mentioned that we are working with purchasing and with our project managers on a solicitation for infrastructure design related to the MLS stadium. Um, the RFQ is, is on the street. There was a pre-proposal meeting yesterday that was held. Um, proposals are due in March. As, as you know and as is usual, Metro Procurement will convene an evaluation committee to review the proposals. And um, once an award is made, then we will bring that contract back to the board for consideration. Are there any questions? Okay. You do have the agenda before you. Are there any questions about the agenda? Okay. If not, that concludes my report. Thank you, Monica. Our next item is 
consideration of the Sports Authority proposed fiscal year 20 capital budget submission. The capital improvement budget identifies projects that are eligible for consideration of funding in the Metro Capital Spending Plan. I think Monica, you will walk us through, I'm talk through that. This one. Um, so yes, last month the authority approved the FY20 operating budget, and at that time I mentioned that we are working with Metro Planning, our facility partners, uh, Metro Finance, on a submission for the FY20 capital improvement budget. And like the chair said, um, the CIB is an, it's an annual plan, um, a plan of proposed expenditures related to capital projects. And it also deals with um, the mechanism for funding. How, how are we gonna fund the project? Not just what is the project, but how would the project be funded? So um, I think that's important to note. And it also means that because it's a plan, not everything submitted will be approved and not everything that ultimately ends up being funded is funded from the from the general fund. So I think that's, that's something we wanna make sure we understand. Um, the CIB does not appropriate funds. It identifies projects that are eligible. Um, behind tab three, you'll see a list of our proposed projects. Um, these are some projects that were, you'll see what was submitted for FY19, and then you'll also see the proposed amounts for this year. Um, the project amounts that you see before you are based on the facility assessment report that this board commissioned in 2016. Um, that's an assessment of Bridgestone Arena and Nissan Stadium. Um, and it, rec it represents the recommended project amounts for 2018, 2019, and 2020. So as you look at this, understand that this is three years worth of recommendations from Venue Solutions Group <coughs> dating back to 2018. Um, also on the list, you'll see capital projects related to soccer. Um, first, the construction of stadium of the stadium and the fields, and then also infrastructure improvements. Um, on this report, it says resubmitted, not started, and so we expect for finance and planning to go in and, and change that um, to completed since the bonds, the geo bonds are issued. If that makes sense, so that will be updated. We left it as it is because this is how it is in the system right now. Okay, so we're continuing to work on this. Um, Metro planning oversees the capital improvement budget until it becomes the spending plan. And so they um, are scheduled and working towards releasing a draft CIB budget um, the first part of April. So we are asking approval. Thank you for that explanation and, and walking us through this. Um, staff is requesting approval of the proposed capital improvement budget for this fiscal year. We would entertain a motion for approval. So motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Ready for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up, we have <clears throat> consideration of a resolution approving a l license and agreement with Competitor Inc. for the use of Nissan Stadium for this year's St. Jude Rock and Roll Marathon. I believe we have a couple of guests with us this morning, but Monica will tee this one off as well. So I think all of you know this, but April 27th and 28th, St. Jude's Rock and Roll Marathon is here in Nashville. Um, it's also, the kids rock race is also part of that. Um, obviously it's a beloved event in the city and we're excited to have them back. Um, each year competitor group rents parking lots here at Nissan Stadium from the Sports Authority um, for $10,000. The resolution and the resolution and the license and use agreement before you um, are behind tab four, if you're looking for them. Um, you'll also find a letter from <coughs> stadium manager Walter Overton just acknowledging that, um, that the race this year takes place um, during the draft and those are Titans reserve dates. Um, clearly there's been a lot of conversations and meetings and discussions about these two events and how they're going to coexist 
And I think it'd be really helpful if our guests from the marathon come and they can talk about um, about the event, about the plan for how the lots will be used and how, um, how these two events will coexist. And of course, the Titans can also speak to that as well. So at this time, I, I believe yeah. Erica Thank Larson you. and Kim Detwiller yeah. are available. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us today. Uh, my name is Kim Detwiller Burton. I've handled the public relations for this event for 20 years. Not only have I done the PR, but I've also taken out the trash, I've hung banners, and I've broken down anything that needed to be done. Uh, we're very excited about our 20 years of running. Every last Saturday in April, Nashville becomes a running town. We're very proud to be the ambassador to this city for 30,000 runners and families that come every year during race week. We're most proud of our relationship with the Nashville community and city. We're part of our, you each are part of our successes. Each year has been a success as we have seen almost a half a million people and twice that many spectators ascend on the Titans Nissan Stadium in a celebration of personal endurance and commitment. This endurance and commitment has also been seen to this race by everyone in this room. This race has an impeccable reputation because of you and we thank you. And now we'll do the presentation. You're free to ask me questions as we go through the slides or after. Uh, for y'all that don't know, we had an integration of Ironman and competitor group uh, in June of 2017. Ironman acquired us. They are a global leader in events and have definitely stepped up our game. They produced 250 events in 50 uh, countries, 100 million in participation in 2018. They have regional headquarters now, and Nashville is actually one of those, which is where Erica works, um, which has about 15 staff members. So they are based here in Nashville. Uh, they do operations and marketing and sponsorships for regions. Um, uh, race highlights, uh, 2018 participation, we saw Keep in mind, registra registration um, was 27,824. That combines the kids' race with that. So that's an overall participation. We do have more registration. These are people that cross the finish line. Some people don't show up due to weather, due to illness, due to injury. Uh, we are expecting 30,000 plus for 2019. Can you tell us about the kids' race? I would love for her to. Yeah. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Erica. Um, nice to meet you. Thank you all for having me. Um, so basically, the Kids Race, we are um, sponsored by the YMCA of Middle Tennessee. They provide um, scholarships for local schools. So through that, I worked with schools that uh, primarily have been here in the past. This year, we have about 40 of them coming this year. Um, so we granted scholarships for underprivileged youth. Um, so that helps us you know, get kids active and introduce them to the running world. And a lot of them come with their parents as well. Um, so basically on Sunday of race week, we have a half mile race for the kindergartners and a one mile race for grades one through seven. Um, so it's at 1.30 p.m. We'll have a little fun festival. The YMCA comes out, provides um, you know, obstacle courses, games, and fun activities about three hours prior to race start. And we'll also have about 30 schools present that day as well. Um, so we'll be using um, lot A um, at Nissan here for those activities. Um, so right now we are at about 1,300 registrations and we're hoping to push um, about 2,500 to 3,000 in the next month. Total. Are the, are the uh, schools participating all in Nashville or in the region or statewide? Um, I would just say in the region, basically. Uh, I'm not familiar. I'm not from Tennessee, so I'm not sure where exact location are. Yeah, so, um, but a lot of them um, have been participants in the past. I know we have about 10 new schools this year, um, so we're really excited to have everyone. So definitely. All right, can I ask a question? Are these schools schools with running? programs, track teams, or how, how do the school, how does the school's component? Yeah, work? absolutely. So it's, it kind of varies. Um, some teachers just kind of volunteer themselves to be the coach or to organize them to come. I know probably half a dozen schools actually have running programs integrated with their after school programs or gym classes and what have you. Um, but this year we also, um, I worked with our creative team to have a 
kind of help that training program. So I designed like a game board style incentive, um, partnered with Fleet Feet um, in the Nashville area. So it's basically a game board for kids to run 25.2 uh, miles from now or whenever they start until race day. They can go into Fleet Feet, get a prize. So there is that incentive. They don't have to do it in order to race, obviously. Um, but we have been working with more training incentives now than we have in the past. Um, but again, to answer your question, not all schools have training programs, but some do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. So is there, how do you focus on like inner city kids or is there a focus for uh, underprivileged children to make sure that you're growing that community? Yep, so we're trying to up the scholarship number, obviously, so we can introduce more kids to this activity, um, which is the YMCA has been an integral part of that, of course. Um, so the YMCA has their Healthy Kids Day, and they basically use this event as, you know, to get the kids to come to their Healthy Kids Day. Um, so what they would normally do at their local YMCA, they will do with us. Um, so we're definitely trying to push to have more kids, as many as possible, regardless of their financial background, come, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, in addition, um, there are some running clubs that actually go into schools and donate tennis shoes that help underprivileged children. Um, let's see, some of the quotes, the survey, runner surveys. Uh, this is the best race that I have been a part of. I love that all kinds of people do this race, very inspiring. Running through the Nashville Sounds field was very cool. Um, fan fantastic job with the entire event. The organizers of the event did a phenomenal job and the people in Nashville were extremely supportive and cheering the participants, participants with the run. If y'all have neighborhoods that we go through, you know that it's a party, that everyone gets extremely upset if we change the course and take the course away from their neighborhood because they've all planned their parties around this. Um, runner demographics, in 2018, we um, saw 37 countries and participants from all 50 states. 63% of the runners are women. Uh, we believe a lot of that is the charity component. 60% uh, are outside the state of Tennessee, which means they're uh, bringing their, their families and their running groups to Nashville. You see the ages, we have 12. You have to be at least 12 to run the half marathon um, through 80. And you'll see the list of um, the, the states that we pull from and their registration numbers. Um, in 2017, we had an economic impact of uh, over uh, 44 million. We lag about a year behind on getting our data, so the 2018 data will be available this, this June. In 2018, we saw a reinvention of this race because of Ironman. Uh, we enhanced the mile markers. We increased our products at the aid stations. We had a marathon finisher recovery zone which leads me to bring up that even though we're partnering with the draft this year, we're also going to be having our medical teams over during the draft experience for runners who might find themselves in stress. They're gonna have our medical teams over there that can help them. Um, distance for everyone. We have a one mile, a 5K, half marathon, marathon in Kids Rock. We used to have the one mile on Thursday, but we've moved that till Sunday. We're kind of using this year as kind of a test market to make that more of a local family experience. We have the one mile, uh, which is a remix challenge. Um, we have a doggy dash, and then we have the kids rock, and we have a band. So we're hoping that, that this year we're really gonna step that up for the local people to come out and participate. Um, we have speakers at every mile markers, pacers with a portable speaker system. There are people actually running with, um, with uh, music. Uh, additional investment in Saturday night we had last year at Ascend Amphitheater, which is usually our post-race concert. Again, that's something that we're partnering with the city and the NFL this year. Dirk Bentley will also be our headliner for our runners as well. Um, we actually have upped our Facebook Live. Uh, we have Jumbotrons at the finish, and we're also, um, upping our signage. What did I do? Okay. Thank you for the walkthrough. This is um, we have, yeah. a very important uh, event that we're proud to be a part of, I know, especially with the late, great Coach Temple serving on this board um, for uh, since its inception, and I know it was a, a race that he was very involved in. So it's nice to see that you're still you. very engaged in, in keeping his legacy. And Yes, and, I miss and, him very much. And it's, it's very nice to hear that you're collaborating so well with 
uh, the, the draft weekend, and mm -hmm. I know um, Nashville always pulls off great things. So, what better way to celebrate you. our 20th running? <laughs> Absolutely. We do Can have a short video, yeah. unless please go ahead. If anyone has any other questions? Yeah, I'm sorry. Something the new guy should probably do more listening than talking. That's okay. But I do have a question. It caught my attention that you were uh, noting that that several of the running clubs are donating shoes to inner city kids. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense for how many pairs of shoes? Like how many kids are receiving this benefit, and is that a is that an actual focus? I'd have to get with the Striders. Um, they they're the ones that do that. Uh, Peter Pressman, as you know, I don't know if any of you know, but we lost Peter last year during a um, a run for our race. He was doing a training run. Peter spearheaded that, and he just chose schools at, at random that he wanted to go into. Um, it was it was their project, but they did go into schools that were preparing for the kids' race. But I'll, I can find more of that out for you. Peter was part of a different organization? He's well, Peter Pressman was in charge of the Nashville Striders. Okay. The Striders have been a very integral part of this race since yes. the beginning. Um, they do our timing uh, clocks. They also do our training runs. Um, and like I said, we lost Peter last year during a training run. Um, that that um, organization um, ha does had immediate leadership, but I'm not real sure exactly what schools they went into this year. I would be very curious if okay. you wouldn't mind. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, as you know, uh, also Souls for Souls has gone in during this time as well, and they donate shoes, running shoes specifically during this time of year for kids. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Okay. okay. Any, Any other quick questions? Video. Any more questions? Thank you guys for the walkthrough and update. Um, at this time, we would we have a staff recommendation to approve a motion for the chair to execute the license agreement between the Sports Authority and Competitor Group for use of Nissan Stadium facilities for this year's Rock and Roll Marathon. Um, this approval. Motion, motion properly seconded. Is there any further discussion? See none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Our legal counsel, Ms. Margaret Darby, will kick this one off for us, and then I believe we will hear from Michelle Kennedy, the COO with the Nashville Predators Organization, to discuss a consideration of a resolution approving the Predators' amended and reinstated joint and several guarantees. Um, well, just real quickly to remind uh, to remind you all what the operating and management agreement says with respect to the guarantees. Um, essentially, in 2012, we uh, entered into this new operating and management agreement as well as the license and use agreement between the team and the sports authority. And the operating and management agreement is between uh, Powers Management and the sports authority. And it says that uh, in order to... Um, it's basically an agreement that in order to induce the sports authority to enter into these agreements, that the local ownership would execute and deliver guarantees up to, they're, they're guaranteeing up to a certain amount um, of the, uh, of the, to the sports authority. And so um, they, there was a form attached to the operating and management agreement. They all executed these back in 2012. And then over time, some of the, um, <coughs> I guess the, the levels of ownership have shifted a little bit. I think a new owner came in at one point. Michelle will have a lot more of that detailed information. Um, and when that happens, 
the sports authority is required to, of course, approve <coughs> those changes. Um, in this instance, the uh, and the guarantee is supposed to secure the obligations of the manager and the obligations of the team, as well as all of their all the liabilities that they owe to the authority under those agreements. Um, so today they have four amended and restated limited guarantees, as well as two new limited guarantees, so two new investors. And um, the four amended ones have just amended the, uh, the amount of the guarantee, that level. And then the two new ones, of course, have uh, the two new investors. And the guarantee itself obligates the sports authority to approve any um, new additional or substitute investors. And I'm happy to answer any questions about those guarantees if you have them. Michelle has more information about the specific levels. I'm sure. So we talked about this. Thank you for having me, Michelle Kennedy. Um, we talked about this a little bit in the January meeting. I let you guys know that we had some pending transactions and I would be coming back with some additional detail as those advanced. And those are on the cusp of ready, being ready to close. So um, it's, it's time for us to request your approval. So in, in brief, as Margaret said, we've done this before. Um, what we have is four different transactions. Two of those transactions involve only existing members. Herb Fritsch will be buying 2.98% of additional equity from Joel and Holly Diverpool and Warren Wu. Joel and Holly and Warren will remain owners. They're only selling a piece of what they own. They will continue to, to be owners. But that will require a reallocation among Herb, the Diverpools, and Warren. So Herb's guarantee number will increase. The Diverpools and the Wu's will decrease. The other two transactions involve one existing member and two new members, two potential new members. Um, SIG Hockey, which is owned by Chris and Tom Sigaran, will sell 5.51% of their of the equity in the team. Brian Grain will, will buy 2.9% and John McAvoy will buy 2.61%. Brian Grain lives in Illinois. Um, his business, his family's business has been a trucking business, which they sold not that long ago. I think now he is managing investments. Um, but he has he has passed the, the NHL's background check. John McAvoy resides in San Diego. He is a telecom entrepreneur, and he too has passed the NHL's background check. Um, so what we're asking for is approval of these reallocations in the case of the existing owners, approval of sub substitute guarantors in the case of Grain and McAvoy, and we're asking that those be uh, provided contingent upon submitting appropriate net worth certifications, which I will work with Monica and Margaret on, um, and contingent upon the transactions being fully consummated with NHL approval. So that's what we ask for today, approval of, of those details. Any questions for Michelle? What are the total amounts of the guarantees? What's the maximum amount guaranteed? It's, uh, give me one second. Maximum amount of the guarantee. Actually, it's written down. The maximum. The, there's an aggregate maximum amount. Is the lesser of 10 million, plus 50 percent of the principal amount of debt of the sports authority and or metro, um, or 15 million dollars. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? I move approval. We have a motion to approve the reallocated and substitute guarantees. A second. Motion and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And I will stay in touch with Monica and Margaret as we plug through the rest of this. I expect it will close within the next uh, one to two weeks. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. At this time, Executive Director Laura Womack will give the authority an update on the progress out at the fairgrounds. We are pleased to have Laura with us today, and then I believe she will be followed by um, representatives from the MLS Soccer Club. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Again, Laura Womack, Director of the Fairgrounds Nashville. 
I'm really excited to show you some pictures today. We have been full steam ahead on construction of our new exposition facilities, which include 131,000 square feet of indoor condition space, new outdoor covered space, which is sheds, a new show arena, and what we are calling our front porch or canopy. Um, on the expo buildings. Needless to say, we are pushing very hard uh, to get done so that we can transition the property over and relocate our events to our new facilities to make way for the stadium and mixed use construction up on the hill. Um, I will say that the, the weather has been somewhat of a challenge. Uh, having one of the wettest Februarys on record has not helped with um, some of our earthwork that we're doing, but again, the t uh, construction team is very committed uh, to the time frame that's been established. Um, wanted to go over a little bit on the slides, if we can advance, just to talk a little bit about the components, because needless to say, over the next several years, there's a lot happening. So just to kind of identify some of the pieces of our uh, fairgrounds construction puzzle is area one on the slide in front of you is our fair park. So we are constructing 46 acres of community recreation space that doubles as fairgrounds event and Can parking you go back space. One, I think? Yep, back one. There you go. So at the bottom of your slide you'll see uh, the first part of that Fair Park project is we've received our temporary use and occupancy permit. We opened it last week and um, if you uh, have a dog, I would recommend you bringing your fur baby there because it is packed. Any time of day you go, Monday through Sunday, it is has been packed. I so by yesterday at 4 30 and it was full. Very good, very good. So it um, we've got the fair park open, dog park is very active. Um, we're still letting the grass in the multi-purpose field areas uh, mature a little bit. We do plan on using that area for parking in April, um, as well as several events that we've got planned out there. And again, that is in part partnership with Metro Parks. Um, while we retain ownership of the property, they will be responsible for managing and programming the park and getting um, hopefully some kids soccer and lacrosse and football and all sorts of uh, programming out there uh, this fall. Laura, so you referred to it as, as uh, one in the diagram, but it, there's a 1A and a 1B. What's um, <laughs> 1B is where the current election commission storage warehouse is located. That is a piece of Fair Park that is just a tracking a little bit behind. We need to relocate those um, election uh, voting machines prior to that building being demolished, which is part of the Fair Park project. So they're, they're going to be relocating those um, sometime early this fall. Um, and once that happens, we will transition that triangle to uh, grass. Uh, number two on your uh, diagram here is just a continuation of Fair Park. That is something that is, um, we've put a request for funding to continue the Greenway project. Um, needless to say, Browns Creek is a very sensitive waterway. It's a no contact creek. And so all of this work that we're doing in Fair Park as part of the fairgrounds uh, revitalization is to really manage stormwater runoff and to help mitigate some of the challenges we have with Browns Creek when we have ra uh, very large rain events. So we hope to continue that project um, over the next several years to get that uh, greenway open all the way to Nolansville. And that will also connect into a greenway extension on the other side um, to help complete the Greenway uh, project for Metro Parks. Number three is, of course, our speedway. We have done some improvements to the concourse and grandstand to help support the speedway. We've improved restrooms, uh, done some lighting and some painting. We've got some projects that are still outstanding. We're gonna be doing some lighting work um, prior to the racing season, which kicks off April 13th with our All-American All 400, which was had to be rescheduled from last November due to rain. So we're gonna kick off the racing season on April 13th. Number four is our expo facility site. So as I mentioned, we've got both indoor condition space and outdoor covered space. 
uh, new hardscapes, RV spots, et cetera, that are going in, and I've got some pictures to show you um, as that work continues. Five is essentially the demolition of our existing buildings up on the hill, and what that will do is make room, make it ready for the stadium and mixed-use construction that will come right after that. Six is a part of our infrastructure. We've got several roadways that are adjacent to the property and run through the property <coughs> that need to be improved, extended, and updated, as well as utilities. So one of the projects that is gonna be very helpful for all of the uses at the fairgrounds is to continue Wedgwood as it enters the property. Instead of having it exit on Nolansville, plan on taking that all the way through to Craighead, what that entails is the building of a bridge over Browns Creek, and that inc certainly involves much more than just Metro. We've got state involvement and of course the federal government involvement in building a creek over a waterway. So that permitting time takes a little bit of, a um, little bit more time and won't be exactly open when we finish the expo construction. We'll also be improving Benton Avenue, which is where your 6A um, to the left of your uh, screen. That serves um, a, a really nice segue from the hill down to the expo facility. We've got a lot of grade challenges on the site um, currently that are not very accessible. So regrading Benton will provide a ADA accessible walkway and drive up from the hill to the bottom of the property. Additionally, we're gonna have service roads that need to be developed and um, parking lots and service roads that help support the stadium mixed use and the fairgrounds uses. Seven, of course, is the stadium construction and eight, A, B, and C are the three mixed use blocks that were approved as part of the project. So that kind of gives you an idea of all the different components that um, Director Faulknesson and I and our, our construction team and of course the MLS team and mixed use have been working really hard on it over the last um, you know, year to, to coordinate. So give a kudos to the whole team. Laura, I have a question. Sure. I saw um, a news report the other day that the state fair commissioner is considering moving. Could you just address that with our board? Sure, absolutely. Um, the state commission is a state appointed body that essentially owns the rights or they have jurisdiction over the uh, production of, of this Tennessee State Fair. Now they contract with the Tennessee State Fair Association, a nonprofit that produces the fair and uh, for on our site for about the last eight years or so. Um, the state fair has been on the fairgrounds property um, for since 1906, very long time. Um, they've expressed interest in looking at alternative sites after this year's fair, and then writing a letter to the legislation, legislature and the governor's office in support of that search. In the meantime, we certainly welcome the state fair. We've been working with them very diligently to work out logistics and the transition from the old buildings to the new buildings for this year's state fair. We're very confident that we can support them this year uh, to host a, a very good Tennessee state fair. And so that is what we're proceeding with. Thank you. The next picture on your slide, it, uh, if you want to advance, that is an aerial of Fair Park. Kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what those multi-purpose fields, they're obviously not striped at this time, but will be available for, again, parking for fairgrounds events, whether it be the flea market or the fair. Um, also, you know, practices of any, time, of any kind, um, that will all be programmed through Metro Parks. It is a Bermuda grass, it is also reinforced turf, so that helps us as we um, program it and use it, hopefully it helps with its resilience and bouncing back from, from all the use it will get. We've gotten a lot of interest, we've gotten more phone calls recently, um, of interest in holding events on that site. So we're trying to just be thoughtful about um, use versus overuse. Um, so we continue to work with parks on that. The next several slides just show you some of the construction. The, it's amazing the amount of work the team has done over the probably the last month 
in construction. What this picture is, is the roof that is going up on Exposition Center 3. Um, that is our medium-sized building. And, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit basic in design, but by design. Um, we have to have a very flexible building, something that will transition well from roller derby to flea market to a glass show to a banquet to housing goats and sheep. So what you'll see when you visit, and I hope you all come out and visit, is a very flexible, very open and inviting space uh, that serves a lot of different activities. The next slide gives you a little bit of perspective on our, what we're calling, again, our front porch. It's the canopy that surrounds uh, the majority of uh, all three sides of the building. Um, most of the canopies are 30 feet wide, which this shows, um, except along Wedgwood, it's a 20 foot wide porch. This will help serve our uh, flea market for, to provide covered space for our vendors um, who generally have outdoor booth space. And the next slide is just shows you a little bit of our color scheme. We went with a, a light gray color block blue. Uh, it's very complementary to the construction that we did in the park and the colors we chose there as well as the speedway. And just kind of gives you an idea of um, what those kind of front doors will look like. And the last slide is from our speedway. Right between turn three and four, we went up there and, and just took a shot of that Expo 3 for you to take a look. And again, they've, um, I wouldn't be surprised when I get there at noon today, that roof is completely uh, com finished. Any more questions? I don't believe so. Fantastic. I'm gonna transition to, so I think, this, oh. Mr. Ian, Mr. Ian Ayer from the team. Yes, thank you, Laura. At this time, we are pleased to welcome the Nashville SC CEO, Ian Ayer, to join us. And thank you for first time for our board, and we look forward to partnering with you. Thank you, and thanks for having me here today. Um, so we find ourselves today almost within a week or so of being exactly one year from starting in Major League Soccer for the 2020 season. and. Um, I thought it would be good to give you an update of, of things generally overall. So um, from a HR point of view, we're in really good shape. We're one year out, as I said, in our technical team. We now have our senior positions in the technical area. So our coach has been announced, our general manager, assistant, chief scout, um, all in place, which one year out has drawn you know, positive comment from Major League Soccer that we're prepared so well in advance, and that allows us to start the important work to, to fill our roster. Um, our front office management team, senior management team, all in place except for one position. So again, um, in really good shape there. And then for those of you who were able to attend, we had our brand identity and launch of our team colors just a few weeks back at Marathon Music Works. And I think um, a great example of the positivity that we continue to see around the team, a great event, a lot of excitement, and I think a a good steer of the type of energy we want to bring to soccer in Nashville. Um, we've, we've acquired our new or found a, a position for our new team offices. Uh, we'll move there in April and they'll be just adjacent to the fairground site. So just over Nolensville Pike with a view across at the site. So uh, almost within walking distance of the facility. Um, we've reached agreement in principle with the Titans to play here uh, until our stadium is ready. Um, I'm very appreciative of their support and, and everybody continues to be very supportive of us in that area. Um, we also continue to search for the right location for our um, practice facility uh, throughout the city and, and also for a youth academy. On our stadium, we continue to make progress there. Um, uh, this is the, I think the third venue I've been involved in personally for sport. And, you know, what's important in that is that we get the right level of functionality in this building. I think it's, it's relatively easy to build a, a, a big facility, but important to make that the right facility with the right functionality. Um, we've been working since, uh, since I arrived with the architect and with uh, the construction partners, so taking the original concepts and, and uh, estimates and, and building that out to, to provide and build a really functional solution that Nashville can be proud of. Um, 
I'm going to show some renderings. Um, oh, that's not it. So this gives you some sense of the, the facade of the building. Um, this would be the northeastern entrance of the facility at the top end of the site. And for those of you who know the site, the site grades kind of downhill. Um, this would be at the top end and at the rear end uh, in the south would be just ahead of where Laura was talking about that mixed use uh, soccer fields and others. Um, Internally, uh, I think, you know, quite spectacular uh, as, as a facility. Um, it's interesting and important to say that what we're trying to do here is make sure that we, we deliver something really special. Um, this will actually be, and I think a lot of people uh, are not aware of this, but this will actually be the largest soccer-specific facility in the United States. So 30,000 seats will be the biggest soccer stadium in the U.S. So important to get that right. At the, south, at, at the north end there, as you look at it, where the big yellow uh, logo and flag is, will be the supporters' end. So uh, been really important and in dialogue with our supporters to make that a standing area where they can really create the noise and atmosphere that drives the rest, rest of the facility. Um, we'll also have, as you, as you look at this, this rendering uh, to your left, uh, that the eastern stand um, is is largely designed for premium space. So we'll have a mix in there of premium lounges, premium suites, and other facilities, loge boxes. So trying to create something for everyone. Three sides dealing with a general admission solution of various types, and then a dedicated premium area and a variety of different products within that. Um, outside, uh, we'll create some, some fan experience zones, um, and then in addition, you know, a big part of the planning and work that we've gone into and, is, and has added to some of the time has been about ensuring that the level of comfort, the ability to get in and out of the facility with least disruption is, is really important to the flow and, and the experience overall. And, I, and again, I think from my own experience, if you get those things right, it makes the thing, people want to come more, people want to enjoy it. There's nothing worse than not enjoying the space and that, that all comes down to the right design. Um, the changes and, the, and the, the hard work that's gone into to creating this design uh, have actually pushed out the schedule. So um, it's extended the design phase as we've looked at various solutions, and it's, you know, it's been important to do that in, 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 in order to come out with the, you know, ultimately the right solution for the, for the club and for the city. Um, it's a complex and challenging site. I talked about the grade. Um, we've had to find the right solution around that. And I think, honestly, the original schedule was probably a little ambitious for such a large stadium in soccer. Um, the new timeline drives a more real, realistic opening date, in our opinion, of 2022 season. And there's a, there's a couple of reasons behind that. The, the, the construction progress or, or schedule was moving into the 21 season. And, and whilst we hadn't yet reached a, a definitive date, what we, what we started to see was that when we talked to our technical team, to our coach, to our soccer people, it started to look and starts to look like we would be moving our team midway through a season, which from a soccer perspective would be you know, a significant downturn for the team. To move your home field advantage mid-season I think wouldn't serve anyone very well. And then equally for our supporters and our guests, you know, to, to sell one product in this facility and then move to another in the middle of a season. It has been done in soccer, it has to say, but in talking to other teams who've gone through that experience, it wasn't a good one. And I think the final thing I would say is that making it a 2020 Sioux season still gives us that opportunity for the big announcement, the big launch, the big day right at the start of a major league soccer season. Um, that outcome also uh, is, is indicating that, that it would drive a different price. Uh, we're not finished on, on completely on design, so I so don't know what that number completely looks like at this stage, but important to know that we're, we're trying to develop something that, as I said, really delivers the ultimate solution that we can have for Nashville and that Nashville can be proud of. Um, we're very clear as the team that any overrun on the original uh, price was, is for the team to deal with, uh, and we accept that fully, and you know, Metro's financial obligation obviously does not change. Um, so that's my update for now. Any questions?
So you're going to start, you're targeting the 2022 season for completion of the stadium, the first season at the stadium? Right. That's correct. We, the completion would be in 21, um, at, at the, probably at the tail end, and, and I think that bodes well for us in the sense that it gives us real opportunity to complete construction, go through commissioning, introduction, test events, um, but, the, but the expectation would be to start our season in March 2022. And you'll be playing at Nissan until then? Yes. And what, what is the uh, what length of time does your season span when you'll be playing? So our season runs uh, March through to October for the regular season and then into November for playoffs. What are you going to do about the overlap? How do you anticipate that? That's something we've we've been working with Steve's team to understand that and understand program. And and you know we're not unique in that sense. There are there are many teams from Atlanta United who share with Falcons, and you know I think there's lots of experience. So so it's about being cognizant of the two different teams at different times and and making sure we work closely. And I and, and I said before, but I would say again that Steve and his team have been hugely supportive, and we're very grateful for that. I think you're going to find that you know, all the, the professional sports teams in Nashville support each other. Absolutely. Through my experience. It's our southern hospitality, Ian. <laughs> I've been enjoying it. <laughs> Thank you. We're pleased to hear that. Thank you. Any any additional questions? or? Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have uh, the facility summaries in our report. At this time, we would entertain any other questions for um, our other partners who are not on today's agenda. And if we do not have any, I assume that would be for the sounds. They will continue to do good work, I know. Um, I'm sure Doug has won several awards since we last saw him, as always. <laughs> More to come on that, I'm sure. Um, at this time, we have our Nissan Stadium report. Madam Chair, members, um, let me welcome all of you for, uh, and on behalf of Nissan Stadium and Tennessee Titans, we recognize, and I try to make a point of saying this every opportunity that I get, that your work as members is voluntary and unpaid. And that means something to us that you're willing to sacrifice your time uh, and your other endeavors to be here with us uh, in our home and you're welcome in this place. Uh, this is not just another big building. Uh, this is where we call home. Uh, I want to also thank Ian for his kind words. Uh, we've never had an easier time working with uh, anyone who's a guest of our building. And we're very uh, grateful and glad to be able to host them during their first two seasons here. Uh, we're putting the finishing touches uh, on our lease agreement with them and uh, have had absolutely no difficulty working with them. Uh, they're great business people and great partners, and we have been privileged to be in support of Major League Soccer uh, long before they were awarded their franchise. So we're grateful for that. Um, our program today is going to be a special, or at least we hope it is. Last night we had the privilege of hosting about two-thirds of the General Assembly here in a reception. I had a great time with them and got to know more and more members of that legislative body. Uh, we also had a few executives from uh, the governor's team. So uh, we're, uh, we'd never done anything like that before, but we wanted the opportunity to meet and get to know them. Uh, a little better and uh, hope to do that again uh, as we move forward. But the reason I mention it to all of you is because of the great job that our staff did uh, in putting all of that together. Uh, I sent them a thank you note last night, but eight of our nine vice presidents were present for uh, the reception. Uh, two of our owners were here uh, and we had a great time and hope that all of our guests, uh, just as the guests here today, had a great time. Uh, What's going on here today will be one of over 450 discrete events in this building this calendar year. Uh, I sometimes get a kick out of people that think that the only thing that happens here is CMA Music Festival and Titan Home Games, and nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, we're, we'll have well over a million people in the building uh, this year, 
uh, for various events uh, of, of all sizes. Uh, next year, we'll have a million and a half people in the building because we'll be hosting uh, almost 20 Major League Soccer games here. So it's an exciting time to be associated with the National Football League and with Nissan Stadium. In any event, we hope that you are made to feel welcome here today. So uh, during our uh, time with you this morning, uh, we're going to have an opportunity to hear from one of our players. Uh, it's a rare privilege for us to have one of our players at one of these meetings, uh, and we're so glad to have Logan Ryan with us. I'm going to introduce him in a few minutes. We're also going to talk about what we've been doing in free agency. Our general manager and his staff have been very busy spending a little over $30 million of our money in the last two weeks. Uh, we're glad to be able to do that uh, because we want to get better and we want our team to improve. We're also going to talk about the NFL draft. Uh, several of our staff people and our uh, senior folks are going to talk about what's going to be done in association with the draft. Uh, we frequently mention in connection with that that it'll be the largest sporting event Tennessee has ever seen. We're also privileged to have the president of the Convention and Visitors Bureau here, Butch Spear, and our good friend who helped uh, bring the NFL draft here uh, to Nashville. So we're also going to introduce our newest vice president, Gil Beverly, who is with us this morning, get uh, an opportunity for you to get to meet him. Uh, and know a little bit about what he's going to do. We're going to talk about our ticket sales and how they're progressing, our efforts with fan engagement, uh, and our director, senior director now of community relations, Tina Tuggle. She just got a promotion this week, uh, and she's going to talk about what we're doing in terms of our community affairs. So uh, before we get any further down our program, I want to take a minute and visit with you about um, Logan Ryan and what he means to our team. He was a standout uh, player at Rutgers University, the State University of New Jersey, and was a starting cornerback uh, both for them and for our conference uh, foes, the New England Patriots, for four years uh, before he came to us in free agency two years ago. He has been a starter for us for the past two years, done an outstanding job for us, one of our leading tacklers were so fortunate to have him here and grateful for the contributions that he's making to our club. Ladies and gentlemen, Logan Ryan. Thank you. Appreciate you guys having me. Uh, Steve, that was an awesome introduction. I'm not going to lie, you took a lot about what I was going to say because I was going to talk about myself for a little bit here. Um, I'm Logan Ryan, cornerback for the Tennessee Titans. Not only am I a cornerback, I'm also a father of uh, two beautiful kids. They're on my cell phone case. I'll pass that around. I didn't, I didn't bring a, a slideshow or a speech uh, because they wanted me to talk about what the community means to me, what Nashville means to me. And um, I don't want to write too much down. I think this comes from the heart. And uh, I moved my family here. I have a beautiful wife named Ashley. We moved our kids here. And uh, one thing, when Robbie and, and Kim tried to give me talking points, I just the word that kept coming up in my mind was opportunity. And um, I was drafted the New England Patriots seven years ago out of Rutgers, like uh, Steve had mentioned. And um, a guy named, who I think is a genius, our general manager named John Robinson worked for that team. <laughs> and um, he, he wrote an analytic report and broke down uh, why, why I would be a good NFL player, I believe that he believed in me, one of the first people to believe in me. So four years go by, um, two Super Bowls, I was able to win with them, and uh, free agency comes around, and John gave me a call and said, hey, I want you to come down to Tennessee. And I had other offers to other teams as well, and I really took a, a, a chance on it. I said, you know what, I've never, I'm from New Jersey, born and raised, I met my wife at Rutgers, uh, played four years um, in Boston, so I've never been this far south in my life. Uh, other than a game. And, uh, you know, I took that opportunity and it paid off tremendously. Um, I was able to come into a community of great people with open arms. Um, also, something about me, as I'm a huge animal advocate, uh, if you guys like animals and I like you, um, my wife, uh, not to keep it too long, I'll keep it pretty short, but my wife, uh, when we moved to, uh, to New England, she didn't want to take any of my money. She wanted to work herself, and that's why I love that woman. She's an independent woman. And um, she worked at an animal shelter, and that's what she did. 
and I would go spend time with her on the off days, on Tuesdays, on Saturdays, uh, when we weren't playing, and I would walk some of those dogs, and I would see those dogs there all the time, and I said, man, we gotta do something about it. So I started taking pictures with the dogs and put it on my Instagram, my social media, and dogs were all there for over a year, and I took a picture with one dog a month, the 26, my jersey number. I called it Ryan's Monthly Rescue. Just dre I dreamt it one night, woke up, I said, we're gonna do it. That first year, all 12 dogs got adopted. So I said, okay, we're on to something here. So fast forward, we get married. We have a small wedding in St. Lucia. Uh, she wanted to do this thing I never heard of, a trash to dress wedding shoot. I spent a lot of money on a wedding dress. She wanted to trash it for some reason. So this is what, I don't know, Tina, you gotta tell me about that one, Tina. I don't know too much about the trash to dress. But um, we're walking through the town, and you know how, how you go to these Caribbean islands, there's a huge stray animal issue. We leave our beautiful resort, we're walking the town, we're taking photos. As the photographer tells us, he says, these are stray dogs, they're, they're city animals, um, don't pet them, don't give them food, they'll bother you, they'll, they'll follow you the whole time. As he is saying that, my wife's on the ground, a dog is licking her in the face, paws on her new wedding dress, and um, we go back to our resort, the photographer takes a snaps a picture, we go back and we said, man, we really gotta do something. So we made a large donation, uh, we donated $10,000, um, and I actually had just signed with the Titans a week before our wedding, so uh, I had the money to do it, uh, donated $10,000 to, um, to that rescue, and uh, in lieu of taking wedding gifts, I encourage everybody just to donate to us, uh, to donate to that animal shelter. And the money that was raised that weekend, um, they were able to pick up over 90 animals, cats and dogs, and pay for all their spay and neuters. So they were able to uh, take a picture. Uh, that picture that I told you that my wife took with the dog that was kind of organic, it wasn't planned at all. I'm shocked in the picture, like, what are you doing? Um, it went viral, and it went all over. ESPN, Huffington Post, Dodo. And I have people calling me left and right. We want to donate to you guys. How do we do this? So I had to just stumble across and start a nonprofit. And that was two years ago, I started the Ryan Animal Rescue Foundation, and I brought it down from Boston to, to, uh, to Nashville. And, um, and honestly, it's been, it's been received with open arms. And when, I, and when I came down here, there was a player that I called before I signed, his name was Jason McCourty. And some of you might know him, but uh, he went to Rutgers as well, he was four years older. He was definitely a, a role model in my life. And, um, I said, how, I said, how would I like Nashville? What do you think? And he said, Logan, if you come down here, you're gonna love it. He said, you'll love it. Um, the community is great. It's growing. It's a great opportunity. And I believed him. And I came down. I signed my contract. As I'm walking in the door, he was walking out with a trash bag. So the reality of our sport is, um, you know, you don't, you don't stay for play for a team forever, right? I essentially replaced him on the roster. One of my best friends but he was still able to talk so highly about Nashville and about my family that we would love it. So I just had so much respect for him in that moment. He ended up going to New England and winning a ring, so I guess we're even in that sense. Um, so it worked out for both of us. But I thank Jason for that. I thank uh, John Robinson, who became the general manager here, to give me that call to come down four years ago to be able to talk to you guys, um, to be able to bring my foundation here and rescue animals and pa partner with Natural Humane. And it also helps that our owner, Amy Adams, is a huge animal advocate as well. So I'll be continuing to do stuff like that. And it's not only me. Um, the one thing I was shocked about coming to this franchise was how great the people and the players were. I was having dinner last night in the Gulch with our all pro safety, Kevin Byer. And the whole time we talked about um, how, how he starts a foundation. I was helping him start his first foundation. He wants to give back to kids. He wants to help out. I think these are the type of players we have here. I think these are the type of people we have here. And uh, I'm extremely excited and blessed to be here. I kept talking about that word opportunity earlier. And I feel like right now Nashville's in a great opportunity. It's a great place for uh, pro athletes. It's a great place to raise a family, which I bought a house in this community. And I will continue to raise my family post-career, regardless where I play. Um, I see these buildings going up. I see the stadium filling out. I see the draft coming here. There's a lot of excitement. When I signed to Tennessee two years ago, the team went nine and seven. They're extremely excited about it. The next year, my first year, we went to the playoffs. The first playoff win in 18 uh, years. And we weren't even ex as excited as we were the year before when we went nine and seven because our expectations weren't higher. Now we went nine and seven this past year, and I don't think anyone's too happy with it as a player. I feel like the expectations have raised tremendously. I felt like they have the right guys in the locker room. I felt like they have the right guys in management. And I feel like the community is supporting us. And we want to continue to grow with the city. The city is growing. Uh, a lot of people are moving here. 
everybody I know wants to come down to Nashville and see Broadway and come to a Titans game. So um, I'm excited to be a part of it. I'm excited for the opportunity. Uh, one thing I wanted to leave you guys with is uh, something that came to my mind. When I first started my Twitter years ago, I put up a quote, and it was, you know, with great power becomes, comes great responsibility. And uh, when I introduced myself, I introduced myself as more than just an athlete because I do play football, but I'm much more than that. I also raise, uh, help raise money and awareness for animals and animal advocate. I'm also a husband and a father. So I felt like, I feel like I have a lot of power with kids looking up to me and being a role model in that sense, and I understand the responsibility of that. And I think that's why they chose me to speak to y'all today, and I, I hopefully I was able to portray that. And I think we have the guys in the locker room to understand that as well. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Logan. We're not gonna let you get away just yet. You are definitely portraying uh, the, the qualities that, that the Titans asked you to come today and, and share with us. Um, we appreciate you making the time to do that. Um, you talked about the culture in, in, on the team. Uh, we all have a perspective of coming to this building and, and being a fan. Could you just uh, tell us about what you experienced playing here in Nissan Stadium? Yeah, playing in Nissan Stadium is great. Um, first of all, we probably have the best weather that you can get. We have a nice grass field that, that's good for longevity of players. Um, the fan experience is awesome. And I wanted to see it grow. And I think uh, Gil, who we just hired, long story short, we've known him for years. His wife was my academic advisor for Rutgers. So I actually had dinner at Gil's house when I was 18 years old. And, uh, and now he's here. So the stars are aligning. And I feel like we can even make it better. I think we can have a great experience here. I think the Predators have a great game day experience. I think we can bring it to the Titans with the winning the culture, the standard, the weather. I think it's a great time, and I'm extremely um, fortunate to be able to play here. Well, we're lucky to have you here. Thank you. And hope hope you stay for a long time. Any other questions for, or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you So is it any wonder that we invited him to speak on behalf of uh, Is it any wonder that we're so excited about our future uh, here? Uh, so, Ryan, thank you so much for coming and for your words. Um, you know, when I came back to work four years ago yesterday, uh, we were in the process of trying to bid for the host of the NFL draft. And everybody in our shop pretty much uh, poo-pooed the notion that we had any chance uh, to get that. Butch remained a believer. And so just as it was when our franchise moved here, uh, the same kind of leadership that brought us to Nashville has brought us the 2019 NFL Draft. And I was asked uh, at a panel discussion uh, what was the one thing that um, convinced your club to come to Nashville. And that, my one word answer to that is leadership. Uh, there's great leadership here in the business community, there's great leadership here in the finance community, and there's great leadership here in the political uh, arena. And all of those things combined to make Nashville uh, the destination that we chose. And those very same factors are what led the league that we belong to to bring one of its premier events here. Uh, and uh, I mentioned earlier, Butch is in the room. A couple of our vice presidents and one of our senior directors are going to talk about the draft and what it means for Nashville. Uh, and I think it is almost of inestimable value that the draft is coming here. Uh, whatever you thought about the NFL, let's say 10 years ago, 20 years ago, all of your impressions about that are going to change over the next uh, month or month and a half after you see what's going to happen here with the NFL draft. Uh, Stuart Spears, one of our senior vice presidents, is going to talk about some of the things that are going to happen and why it is significant for Nashville. Uh, you know, it's the why about things that really matters, not so much the what, but the why. So, Stuart, if you'll step up. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Uh, good morning. Um, the arrival of the draft is a significant milestone for the city. Uh, as Steve mentioned, it's the 
will be the largest sporting event ever hosted in the state is the NFL's second uh, biggest event that they host outside the Super Bowl. So it'll be quite an honor for our city to host it. If you look through the history of the draft and where it's been held, it was in New York for decades, and then they shifted to Chicago, and then to Philadelphia, and then to Dallas. And then following the, that line of large, major metropolitan areas, they have chosen our town, and I think that speaks wonders to the potential of our city and to the people that sell this city. It was presented as the perfect site to create a new, larger, better draft. I mean, not only are they coming to our town, which is much smaller than the other cities they have hosted it in, they are also ramping it up to make it the largest draft that they have ever hosted, much less the largest event that we've, we've hosted. Um, it is a week-long uh, series of events and activities culminating with the first round on Thursday night and then carrying at that peak level of interest through the weekend. Part of what intrigued them about Nashville is our ability to host a party. Uh, the city of Nashville is well-renowned for enjoying itself and its patrons and its visitors. And so uh, the epicenter will be downtown on Broadway at first and then spilling across the river into the parking lots here at Nissan Stadium. The main stage will be the largest stage ever constructed in Nashville. That's what I understand. It will be massive. We've all enjoyed New Year's Eve. We've all enjoyed the Fourth of July. We all enjoyed the Titans uniform reveal last spring. But all of those stages and setups will be uh, significantly smaller than what we're going to witness here next month. Um, the marriage of Nashville and the draft will include a great deal of music, as everything does when it, it happens here, crossing uh, multiple genres uh, from not only country that we're well known for, but obviously all, all the other genres that are important to this market. Um, the economic impact of the draft is, is significant. Uh, not only the tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of visitors that come to the town, uh, but also the exposure for the city on a worldwide stage. The media coverage of the NFL draft is immense. Uh, it is across four uh, broadcasting networks this year, the most that it's ever had. So that'll provide uh, Nashville uh, a four-day infomercial, if you will, to present itself to the rest of the country and to the, and to the world. Um, in addition to the excitement that comes from the fan activities, which will all be free, um, that's an important notation for the league and the investment they make in the city, is that all the draft activities are free, um, the, whether that be at the stadium or across downtown. But even beyond those days and all the measured economic impact, the NFL take special note to try and have a leave-behind impression on cities where they host the Super Bowl or the draft. They create opportunities or seek opportunities throughout the week to interact with the community in which the event is being held and trying to create an impression that remains uh, after the draft is over. So I'd like to invite uh, Tina Tuggle up now. She'll share a little look into what's going to happen as the league and the Titans give back to the community during this week. Good morning, Tina. Good morning, everyone. Again, I'm Tina Tuggle, Senior Director of Community Relations, and I wanted to talk a little about the community impact that will be going on during the whole draft week. Um, one of those is the NFL Huddle Against Hunger. Um, as part of the NFL's 100 uh, Huddle for 100 campaign, um, It'll kick off during the 2018 NFL Draft, and the campaign is inviting one million fans to contribute at least 100 minutes of their time in their communities for various community outreach. Um, during the Nashville week, we'll have three draft activities um, as well as two community-wide food drives. Those will include, beginning on April 23rd, some of you have participated in the Bridge Ministries events that we have that are hosted under the Jefferson Street Bridge on Tuesdays. Um, so we'll start our community outreach on that Tuesday, April 23rd. Um, 500 volunteers the following day on Wednesday here at Nissan Stadium, along with current and um, alumni Titans players and the draftees, will participate in packing 600 pantry packs to go to area children and elderly as part of uh, the partnership with Second Harvest Food Bank and Bridge Ministries. Um, 
the following day we'll have current Titans players as well as current Titans alumni distributing those packs that we will be making the previous day to two local um, schools that we've uh, that we work very closely with um, and then la lastly we will be encouraging all of Middle Tennessee and Nashville to participate in the uh, the food drive um, there will also be a competition among area high schools um, and the high school that collects the most food will be uh, benefited and awarded with um, special activations during draft week. Um, another thing that we'll be actively engaged in is um, our youth and high school football space, right? So throughout the course of the week, we'll have tons of activations surrounding youth and high school football. Um, there will be the play football draft high school day that there will be 300 area high school football players invited to take part in sessions led by players, NFL legends, um, and people in the professional sporting industry. Um, there will be a play football legends clinic. There will be 100 middle school students taking part in that, and that will be led in conjunction with the USA football um, and high school legend or NFL legends community as well. We'll, have a, we'll host what's called a players football prospect family brunch. At that brunch, we'll have parents of the NFL players, the draftees, um, and they'll just learn ways to support their children, their sons in this journey. Um, they'll hear from current players, former players, and their parents as well. Um, our first round draft pick will be on the stage. We'll have the commissioner and 13 members of local high school community, so they'll get the opportunity to hand in the pick and announce the Titans pick. Um, for the first round. We'll also have eight local high school students as part of the Hand the Cap program, and those students will have the privilege of handing the draftees the cap as they walk across the stage. So there'll be a, lo a lot of exposure for our, for our youth community. Um, and then we'll also have thir 13 high school students on stage with Jarrell Casey when he announces our pick for the third round. Lastly, there will be um, a play football field over it as part of the NFL experience. And on Saturday, this will be out throughout the course of the draft, but on Saturday, there will be shuttle services provided uh, for children from the North Nashville community that would like to participate as well. Um, does anyone have any questions around any of that? Thank you so much. And now I'll hand it over to Bob Flynn, our Vice President of Nissan Stadium and Game Operations. Good afternoon, everybody. Bob Flynn, Nissan Stadium. So I get to talk about the fan experience over here. Um, first of all, it's going to be a free experience for families throughout, you know, Middle Tennessee and for wherever, wherever they come from. Um, on Thursday, it's going to go from 12 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Friday, 12 o'clock to 10 o'clock. I mean, 12 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And Saturday, with the partnership with the uh, marathon, it's going to start at 8 o'clock and go to 6 o'clock because the marathon always ends and there's always a big party. So the cooperation between both Marathon and the NFL, uh, they decided to open it up early because it was supposed to be 9 o'clock, now it's going to be 8 o'clock. What it's going to have over here, lot S, H, J, K, and R is going to be all the footprint, um, which will have the NFL museum will be here, the Vince Lombardi trophy will be here. Um, we'll have a band stage running throughout the whole day. It will be programmed with different uh, acts coming up there and just playing throughout the day. You know how, how Music City does it and how Butch does it. We always have music going. Um, so we'll have music. We've got uh, the 40-yard dash. We've got NFL partners setting up. We've got um, – they wanted to get Nashville – food scene involved, so they've gone out and reached out to a lot of different uh, restaurants and food trucks that will be set up along, uh, on the footprint. Um, we'll have a, a Play 60 field for kids to go out there and play. We'll also have a clinic field where they'll be putting on different uh, drills and stuff like that. There will be autographs from Hall of Fame players, legendary players, current players. Um, if you want to do something, we, they'll have it here. It's going to be... It's going to be uh, you know, it's going to be packed full of a little bit of everything. Security-wise, we'll have two different entrances, one over on, on uh, let's see, it's second in Victory. So they'll have about 13, 14. You have to come through mags, and they'll have an x-ray. And then gate one, they'll come through gate one also. They'll come around here, and they'll go out through gate six. Uh, but, you know, once again, this uh, in this whole area would be fenced off. Um, NFL is very concerned about safety and security, so they will not do the clear bag for this side. On the other side is clear bag, but, but they will be going through mags 
and we'll be checking, you know, purses and stuff like that. So wait, which side is the clear bag policy? Cl the clear bag policy would be on the just if you're on the Broadway the side. Okay. Yes. So on our footprint here, it will not be clear bag. And I know we said the tickets are free. Free. And how do you obtain them? I, I mean, you just show up. Just there is there, okay. there is Isn't a way. There an there, online they, link? Do they you do have, have an online link. That's more about information and stuff like that, about who's playing in here okay, and all that stuff. Okay, because I thought there was a pre-register, and if people have asked, I've shared that yeah. information. You can, on. you can register for it. We are doing some tours here. So you don't, you don't need an actual ticket to go through uh, security nope. to participate? Butch, right? Uh, they do have an app, and mm -hmm. by utilizing the app, they'll keep you updated on what's happening where, and also if there's a slower time, they'll communicate now is a good time to come. We expect it to be... But you don't really need a physical ticket. No, to, physical okay. That is helpful no, to understand. Yeah. <laughs> and parking will be A, B, C, D. Um, and I think we've got some shuttles coming in. Add to that. Mm -hmm. All of the parking on this side will A, B, C, and D, as well as the city event site are all free. So you probably have, in addition to the Titans, parking or door parking. Another thousand spaces on this side of the river. Thank you, Butch Spearden, with the CBC. For <laughs> He's got a lot of knowledge. He's got topic. a lot of knowledge. <laughs> we know you're the fan experience viewer. Thank you. He's our ringleader. So, uh, but no, over here. So um, it'll be three great days of entertainment. Like like uh, we've all said, it's free. We expect a lot of families come through here. There's going to be plenty to do. Uh, plenty of NFL history here with the museum and autographs and you know we'll, we'll have a lot of fun fan interactive uh, activities so it's, it should be three uh, busy long days but a lot of fun. How are we um, sharing the information with the downtown business community and traffic and for those three days of, of um I guess our general public getting in and out of downtown, I would assume there's some considerations or um, to have or... I was about to say, I don't think you're leaving. <laughs> Since I work downtown, just give me a little advice. Now, um, first, there will be a link on our website with all current information. Uh, we had three days And your of website for the general visit public Visit musiccity.com. Thank you. I think you could do slash draft, but visit musiccity.com. Uh, we had three days of community meetings with downtown building, asset managers, residents, and businesses that are uh, to communicate to them first. Uh, we, Mr. Underwood was attentive at all three. The mayor made two of them. C3 Productions is handling the logistics for the NFL. They have a point person on staff that is literally will be on site and reaching out to all the businesses. We have delivery, delivery set up. All of the businesses will have access to their parking. It will be inconvenient. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. Uh, we're so encouraging for, people so to work from home. Downtown businesses that shuttle in and out for using the lots here at Nissan Stadium through the downtown partnership is that. Well, that, is that business as usual there, or we're how? replacing the state employees? So we have a lot for them. So we're freeing because that because we're up. using those. You're using those assets, the parking yes. for fan engagement and different children's activities. Is that correct? Some will be moved from R to A, B, C, and D. The state employees will be moved over to HCA's lot in their new complex in the North Gulch. But the communication will be nonstop from now. Till after the and, draft. And it would be the same downtown partnership showing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are in lockstep as well. We are continuing to meet, and I've never been involved with any event or seen any event that has had this level of detail, communication, and offsetting, like additional parking if we're moving somebody out. So it's, it's pretty good. It won't be flawless, and it will be inconvenient. But, but it will be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun, and it's going to be a huge payoff for the city. No, thanks, Butch. So the other thing that I want to bring up is uh, 
NFL Network will be broadcasting here. Uh, I think College Game Day will be broadcasting here, so the exposure is going to be great. Actually, in the ES in the West Club, ESPN will be broadcasting some of their uh, shoulder programming on fr uh, Thursday and Friday for exposure for for the draft. Uh, the exposure for you know for Nissan Stadium in, in Nashville is going to be incredible. Um, I think uh, the NFL says this is their second largest event that they put on. Super Bowl will be number one, so this will be number two. So it's it's a it's a major coup for us to get it, and I'd say between Butch and Steve and all that, I mean they did a great job. Okay. It seems like we're hearing a recurring theme of Nissan Stadium and your organization here at the Titans collaborating with a number of various partners in our community to put on phenomenal sporting events and other events, and um, it's it's really tremendous. So. Thank you guys for the work that you're doing. I know it sounds very complex, but it sounds also like uh, there's a lot of people involved thinking through all these these details. So it's Thank helpful you. to hear about it today. Just Dudley? A quick question. The, uh, the draft theater where the picks will be announced will be at the bottom of the floor, is that correct? Correct. And, and looking at your, your photographs here, so it looks like one of the photographs shows stands on one side of Broadway or one side of the lower area in front of the um, uh, draft theater, are there going to be stands or is it just going to be open standing? We are going to have stands. Most of it's going to be open standing. Stuart, correct? It's going to be standing at the, the, the grandstanding C is uh, hosted by the league. For, for, for the public coming in will fill the street. Okay. That's the second thing. Okay. So I think that, I think Stuart might said it's going to be six stories tall. So I think the Acme feed is four stories. Five. So, yeah, it's going to be amazing. How long will it take to set up the, the I stage start. in advance? I mean, <laughs> the flagpoles and the roundabout at First and Broad are gone. So it started this week. Okay. All right, so I think I'm bringing the feed back up, and then you're going to see most of us again. So. so, Dudley, just to follow up on your inquiry about it, uh, the main theater stage will be a factor of three times bigger than anything that's ever been built in Nashville before. The, the stage is 500 feet wide and then goes about a block in both directions on first for the various media rooms, green rooms, uh, staff and media working areas. It will be colossal. Um, but that's the scope of what uh, something like the NFL draft brings to whatever city it goes to. It's, it's going to be uh, quite a show. Um, in my position, I have the opportunity to introduce uh, a lot of people from time to time, and I, I am I have never been prouder to introduce uh, a member of our staff than I am this morning. Gil Beverly uh, was educated at Penn and got degrees there and from the University of Oregon. Uh, and while education is certainly important, uh, business experience and, and um, the ability to know what's coming next are even more important in my view. Um, there are so many qualities that he is going to bring to us and so much work that we have for him to do. Gil's going to be in charge of our uh, multimedia, our digital group, our marketing, our, our brand, and our promotions, uh, among other things. And uh, I have never seen quite as much excitement around a new hire as we've had with uh, Gil. Uh, he is deeply experienced, having been at ESPN for over a decade and at Learfield Sports for the past couple of years. Uh, and I am uh, privileged to have the opportunity to introduce you, him and let him tell you a little bit about himself and what he plans on doing. Gil Beverly. Um, 
to be clear, I'm kind of jumping on the ship. I, I kind of, to mix metaphors across football and baseball, I've kind of been deposited on third base here and I'm rounding home. Um, a lot of the hard work and the heavy lifting has been done by the team that you've um, already started to hear from and Butch and others. And um, I started three weeks ago. So um, I'm just trying to ride the wave and, and sort of uh, wait to be in awe of everything just like everybody else here. Um, you know, from a marketing and communication standpoint, there are sort of three overarching objectives here as we um, look towards the draft. You know, one is the baseline in information gather. I mean, delivering and making sure that fans and consumers know, you know, the nuts and bolts of what's going on. So the draft is coming. Here's where you go. A lot of the information that uh, Stewart and, and um, others have kind of talked us through and like, where can you go to access it? What, what's available to me as a fan and so on and so forth. Um, then from there, it's showcasing the Tennessee Titans brand, but even more important, it's showcasing Nashville, the city of Nashville and the state of Tennessee. Um, you know, you've heard multiple times that this is the biggest event, in ten, you know, sports event in Tennessee history, which is great, but I don't even know if that does it justice. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Underwood used the term inestimable. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a mouthful in terms of the impact of an event like this. And, you know, if you're around sports long enough, um, on a from a national standpoint, there's sort of a route that sports takes. You know, it goes to Atlanta, it goes to New Orleans, it goes to Indy, it goes to Phoenix. And having an NFL draft, I mean, that's one of the biggest sporting events in the country, okay? So it's not even, there's no balls being played. But, you know, in terms of where it sits in the constellation of events here, it's up there. And so having an event like that here in Nashville sort of solidly pushes Nashville to the fore of that route and announces the city that much further in terms of the type of caliber of the, you know, the locale that we are and our ability to pull this stuff off. So it's it's really a massive thing. Um, and I'm excited to be able to parachute in on it at the last minute, <laughs> maybe claim a little credit. <laughs> and then last but not least, obviously, with all that being said, our, you know, marketing communication is designed and still pride. So to make sure that fans understand all that and to really sort of use that as a rallying point for hey, we're kind of big time here, and the things that we have here are awesome, and the fact that I as a fan get to tap into it is a real privilege and opportunity for all of us. So that's really what the essence of what we're trying to get across with all of our elements, um, and I think you'll see a lot of excitement um, tied around that. So in terms of the specifics, our promotion's already started. If you've driven around um, the highway system, you've, hopefully you've seen some of our digital billboards and outdoor and out of home um, started right around, um, I think, midweek last week or maybe a little bit earlier. Um, that'll continue through the draft itself. Um, and then mid-month, you'll start to see local television, um, most notably within the, um, the Predators playoff um, round one. Um, so we'll have a fair amount of uh, local cable. And what's really exciting about that is we have a pretty solid roster of um, high-level um, music acts that are going to be featured in our video. So um, my personal knowledge of music ended around 1999, so I'm going to have to um, refer to my notes here. But well, we've got... I'll bring you up to speed quickly. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, when, you, when you're marketing for the draft, are you also... Is it a co-branding for the Titans um, as well, or is it tricky there? How does... Um, as we're building up to... Um, the big event next month. How do we also uh, remind folks to tighten up? Yeah. Well, it, it is a little tricky in the sense that, you know, the, it, the NFL wants it to be about the NFL and the draft, and it's not, you know, they, they decidedly don't want it to be about a specific team, even the ho in the host market. But that being said, that event's not here if the partnership between the Tennessee Titans, the city, and others doesn't exist and doesn't bring it here. So um, the, the messaging does put the Titans brand front and center as well. Um, and, you know, without sort of beating our chest and, and, and being braggadocious, um, the intent is to, you know, claim a little bit of credit and and really bring it, you know, less so much about the Titans franchise, but the Titans nation. The Titans nation is welcoming this event to the city and that you get to be a part of it and you should be proud. So, um, you know, that's a lot to communicate literally in a 30 second spot or, or a, you know, a social post or whatever. But the way that we're crafting the messaging is designed to sort of evoke that feeling. Um, so you'll see our logo 
logos. You'll see Titan up. Um, you know, the, a lot of the, the promotion is coinciding with the uh, release of the schedule. Um, so there'll be a lot of integrating messages across both um, of those events. And so that's another way that, you know, we'll be promoting the Titans at the same time. Um, you know, get ready for the draft, get ready for the season. So yeah, we're absolutely weaving ourselves throughout it. And again, we want to make sure that it's inclusive and people feel a degree of ownership, both as, you know, citizens of Nashville, but, but as Titans fans. So. Um, but in terms of, the, like I said, the, the specifics and some of the acts that we're including, it's uh, Jimmy Allen, Justin Moore, Florida Georgia Line, um, affectionately known as FGL in our, in our, our hallways, um, Lady Annabelle, um, Mitchell Tenpenny, uh, Low Cash, um, and others that we're still working on. But the intent there is there's going to be a 30-second draft spot that some of these will be featured in. But then throughout uh, social media, there'll be buttons um, interviewing folks and having them talk about Nashville. What are your top five honky-tonks? What are your top five restaurants? Um, where do you like to do when you come into town? Um, what is the hidden gem that you like to go to? So again, shining a light on the city and the municipality as we lead into the draft. And then you'll see a button of them saying tighten, tighten up or, or or go Titans and things of that as well. So bring, you know, closing the loop and bringing it back to uh, the franchise as well. Um, beyond that, we're doing, you know, a fair amount of just editorial coverage. Um, you know, our, the voice of the Titans, Mike Keith, who I'm sure you're all familiar with, um, he's launching a really ambitious and bold initiatives where he's going to do 30 podcasts in 30 days leading into the um, uh, the draft itself, and that's going to really be an exhaustive look at everything from who the Titans are going to be looking at and what our strategy is going in from a football standpoint um, to the entertainment stuff that we're talking about and even the marketing and promotion and how we're bringing it to life. Um, so um, really making it accessible for all Titans fans. Um, and then also along that vein of making sure that fans feel like they're a winner in all this, uh, literally, um, we have a pair of consumer promotions where you have the opportunity to win the, um, the chance to hand our fourth round, no, our first round draft pick their, their draft cap after they've been drafted. So to really, to literally be a part of the run of the show. Um, our second promotion has run into a little bit of a hiccup because it was supposed to be the opportunity to announce our seventh round draft pick. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, in uh, our general manager's wheeling and dealing, um, we dealt away that pick, so we don't have a seventh round draft pick right now. So we're trying to figure out how we're going to replace that. But ultimately, there's going to be some really cool behind the scenes opportunity for somebody to, again, be a part of it. So, you know, in addition to, you know, just sort of having it in our hometown, there's also going to be opportunities for literally fans to be a winner in all this, which we're excited about. And then last but not least, you know, during the week of, um, we're just going to have loads of coverage in terms of um, our website, our social media presence, you know, and really bringing the thing to life and, you know, trying to make sure that people understand exactly how big it is. If, if you don't go on Thursday, our intent is to create a, a degree of, of FOMO to make sure that it drives you to get there on, on Friday and Saturday. Um, and again, just to have a lot of person on the street coverage, um, in terms of bringing the video and the sights and sounds of the whole thing to life. Um, and then, of course, um, integrating our first round draft pick and all of our picks, um, you know, throughout the coverage and starting to do a big coming out party for, you know, the new Tennessee Titans as well. So that's what's in store. And again, I can't claim a lot of credit for it. I'm kind of jumping on, but um, I mean, I'm excited to be here. I appreciate you guys uh, having me. And, you know, again, as a veteran of a lot of uh, national sports scenes, um, this is a really awesome opportunity for this city, and I couldn't be more excited to be a part of it. So any other questions? Thank you, Gil. It's awesome. a pleasure to meet you. Welcome, Welcome nice to, to meet Nashville. You Thank you. <laughs> I know we've had a long agenda and I appreciate your patience and endurance with us, but the, the draft is such a significant event. We wanted to pull back the curtain and have you guys have a, a view of what we're doing. So I'll, I'll quickly move through our ticketing update. Every year at this time, I'm privileged to be able to come up in front of you and update you on how uh, our ticketing uh, campaigns are working. It's such an important element of our business and our relationship with you guys. Uh, but as, as in years past, we, uh, sent out renewals around the end of January and have started working on uh, getting that in and, and ramping up the engagement with our customers to ensure that they are uh, going to remain a, a part of what we do at uh, Nissan Stadium. Uh, we have a series of uh, engagement 
style events over the off season as we do every year. Uh, this year in particular, we're able to focus uh, around the NFL draft. The whole week of the draft, we're going to have private events for season ticket members, uh, including luncheons with uh, national uh, football analysts at the Country Music Hall of Fame, uh, events at uh, George Jones downtown, and we are actually even bringing the uh, General Jackson showboat from Opryland down to the river downtown here. We'll be docking and having season ticket member only activities there. Um, in addition to those activities, we also have upcoming ticket initiatives, uh, including the Titans 5K and movie night. Um, we have a season ticket movie night we've done every year. This this year's actually this weekend, tomorrow night and, and uh, Saturday night, and uh, where we invite all our season ticket members out to the stadium here, show the movie up on the Jumbotron. And uh, this year, picking up on a theme that kind of uh, was captivated at the end of last season. We're showing Remember the Titans to the group uh, to kind of get everybody in, in the mood and the spirit for the upcoming football season. The 5K is going to be May 11th. It's uh, one of our largest community initiatives that we do every year. It has an opportunity. F it is an opportunity for fans to engage with our players and coaches, as well as have uh, some give back opportunity to the community. So that'll be Saturday morning, May 11th. Uh, uh, Sign-ups are ongoing, so everybody can log on to TitansOnline.com/5K if they'd like to uh, come out and join us that morning. I understand the weather is going to be great. Guarantee it. <laughs> Um, uh, this, this year, in addition to the draft, the league has, uh, is celebrating its 100th anniversary, which will be next spring. So they're, they're calling this the uh, NFL 100, uh, celebrating a, a century of, of football. We haven't been involved for all of those years, but every team's been able to jump in. So there are some uh, fan uh, opportunities that will be open to general fans as well as season ticket members. And uh, during the season, it will be a theme that you see uh, throughout the stadium and throughout the broadcast of games. Um, so that's a quick run through ticketing. Any questions? Great. Uh, I'll have Tina come up here and give a, a look at what we're doing in the community outside the draft. Tina Tuggle, Senior Director, you, is back. <laughs> Congratulations on your thank you, thank well you so much. Permission. I just want to talk about a couple things we've done thus far in 2019 in the community. Um, you may have heard me talk about it in the past, our Titan Spelling Bee, uh, which is a fun event that we've hosted and it's continued to grow. This year we had 48 contestants. It was 15 rounds, which was a very long time. We almost ran out of words. Um, there were 51 counties represented in Middle and West Tennessee. And our winner uh, is from Fred Page Middle School in Franklin. He will represent us um, in Washington, D.C. DC for the Scripps National Spelling Bee. So I encourage all of you to tune in and cheer him on. Um, the other slide uh, is the Polar Plunge, which was a ton of fun. We worked very closely with Special Olympics. And this year we had a dunk with the coach contest, encouraging fans to create teams to raise money for Special Olympics. They raised a total of 84000 over $84,000 for Special Olympics. And coaches team contributed to almost 20% of that, what, raising what over 16000 When was that? What was the day, Shirley? <laughs> So this was in January. It was really cold. And the funny thing about this, it was really cute. Um, one of the Special Olympics athletes asked Coach to plunge with her. And of course, he obliged. Um, she is <laughs> representing us in Dubai right now in the Nationals. Aww. She is a really good swimmer. So we've been watching and encouraging her. But Coach had also planned to backflip into the water. So he, of course, jumped with her, got out, backflipped back in. So he did it twice. So we... Who to him for that, because it was freezing cold. Um, and the last slide represents, we, um, I'm sure you all are familiar with the Read Across America Week, which begins the week of March 20th, which happens to be Dr. Seuss's birthday. Um, and so we partnered with Coach's Foundation, that foundation actually second and seven, which represents he and his teammates back at Ohio State wanted to do something with kids. And so they thought it'd be a neat idea to give books to second graders. They had enough money to raise books for seven classrooms. 
hence the name Second and Seven. Um, since then, they have written and created 11 children's books. Um, and so this year, we had we took coach, um, T-Rec, and cheerleaders, as well as some of our players, to Paragon Mills Middle School, where we read to the kids his latest edition, which is his 11th book, The Hog Mollies and the Pickle Pie Party. Um, and so we gifted all the kids with books to kick off Read Across America Week. And we, uh, at that school, we contributed over 1,000 books. That's it. Anyone have any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Tina. I think Bob is rounding us out. Yep, last He's one. He's the closer. So, <laughs> exactly. So I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go quickly. Um, so stadium events coming up. Uh, we just had She Believes uh, the March 2nd, which was a great uh, event. We had uh, four women's soccer teams here. It was U.S., England, Brazil, and Japan. It was a great, great day. The weather wasn't fabulous, but we had we had a great turnout. It was the highest turnout amongst the three different different stadiums that they played at. So we're really happy with that. Then after, then we have uh, April 6th, we have uh, Supercross, which you, you all know I love the dirt shows. So uh, I'm excited about this one, first one we've had here. Um, and people are gonna come from all over the country. We've, we're getting calls from New York and all that stuff. So it should be pretty cool. Uh, it's April 6th. And then after that, we'll go into the draft. Then we'll have Eric Church here, and Eric Church is working with the CMA, so we'll be able to use the same same uh, band, I mean, stage and all that stuff. So it's been a good cooperation there. Then after the CMAs, which is you all know about, four four uh, real good nights. Uh, I'll skip th that into my next presentation. I'll probably just do one on, on Monster Jam just for y'all. Uh, you know, we have the ten Titans games. We have the two TSU games. Uh, we have the Music City Bowl game we, this year for a new game. We have uh, Western Kentucky versus University of Louisville on September 14th. That's with the National, Nashville Sports Council. So we're excited about that. Um, and then I'll probably have two other announcements to make. So this year we should have 25 bowl events, which uh, will be one more than we had last year. So I'm excited about that. We're just uh, waiting a couple more confirmations. Uh, lastly, what I'm excited about to tell you all is so all, you know, this is a huge stadium. It, it relies on a lot of nonprofit organizations to run concession stands, to do parking, to do ushering, and all that stuff. So this past year, between all those nonprofits, they raised $1.5 million to their different charities, which is, I think, a pretty cool thing to that we have here to, to be able to help raise that money. It's not something that we did, um, but without the stadium, without all these different events, I mean, 1.5 million raised by these nonprofits, which, I mean, lots of times uh, they come in here early. You know, I can't open up the stadium, can't put on events without all their help. So a lot of our staff that for the for events is nonprofit work, and this is how they fund a lot of their operations. So it's pretty cool that they that they can raise that money. And we offer them that opportunity. With that said, any questions? Because I know it's getting long, but love to talk to y'all. <laughs> thank you, Bob. I think I, we're good. Thank you very much for attending today. Um, I think I'm going to close it up. Uh, we will we'll do a recap with the football draft and, you know, free agent signings and all that stuff whenever we pr present next time. But thank you for all y'all's time and efforts. Thank you. That brings us to the end of today's agenda, and uh, it's been a fun one, certainly. Thank you for the uh, folks at Nissan Stadium, tremendous. It's clear there's so much more than football and uh, the economic and community impact that this facility has um, on our, our region and our state is tremendous. Um, thank you all so much. Our next um, meeting is scheduled for April 18th at First Tennessee Park. It'll be nice to be back in the ballpark uh, during baseball season. And um, I believe we will need to have a finance committee meeting prior to then, and uh, staff will send out um, some communication to the board about scheduling that. Thank you all very much. If we see, yes, please. Just uh, a quick comment. Uh, I would like to uh, thank the Titans this morning. It was a lengthy presentation, but it was excellent. Uh, we appreciate uh, Logan's comments. They were great. Um, He's truly an asset to our community, and we're happy to see Gil here. Here, And as always, Tina Tuggle, we appreciate what you do in the community. And I'm just really excited about the draft and to see that it will showcase Nashville in a special way, but also it's an opportunity for everyone to participate. So I'm very excited. Thank you for a great presentation. Thank you. Any further comments? 
If there's no further business, we would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Thank you. We are adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.